My first experience was coming out here in these woods by myself late at night and doing some tree knocking. And that's when animal calls started happening around me, but there was a slight difference in the animal calls. Um, that was discernible to me because I've been in these woods by myself since I was seven years old. Um, the one that really stood out to me was uh, the whippoorwill. If anybody's ever heard a whippoorwill call, they usually rift in a tree and they make their call and then they might fly somewhere else and make the call again. This whippoorwill was coming at me while I was making the call. That's a dead giveaway because whippoorwills don't move when they make their call. So I knew that I had visitors right then. Um, it just kind of escalated from there. Um, that was my first encounter with them coming in close to me and I was able to get recordings of them uh, by leaving food out for them and I left the the food out and I held it over my head, as silly as it may seem. I held it over my head and said it was a gift for them. They could have it if they wanted it. And then I held my recorder over my head and said it belonged to me. Please do not take it or destroy it. And I set it on the chair and pushed record. And I stayed for about a half an hour and then I left. And within five minutes of me leaving, you can hear rocks being clacked around the recorder. And then uh, about two hours after I'd left, that's when you can hear the bread being lifted off of a metal chair, the package being torn open, and the smacking of gums, like uh, a five-year-old child you haven't taught to chew with its mouth closed yet. Well, I haven't heard any stories from people about them, but I suspect they've always been here in this area. Um, there was one that gave, a woman that gave me somewhat of an education looking at my photographs, she noticed that I had yellow root in this area and I asked her the significance of that and she said well they use it to bathe with and I said okay um, tell me how that's done because I'm not going to say something is impossible my question is how is it possible so she told me that they'll pick the root and they pulp it with uh, usually a stone or a, a hard piece of wood they'll pulp it so that the, the juices of the plant are running out and so I did this myself and what I found is when after you pulp the root and you have water you just rub it on yourself with water and it suds up just like soap does. Uh, one thing I've been seeing at the ponds and the, the tanks that are around here in this area since I was a kid is scummy soap suds that I couldn't figure out what chemical is bubbling up from the bottom of this pond or whatever that would cause that to happen. I couldn't come up with anything because there's nothing that, that leaves a residue like that. But when I used this, this yellow root, and saw it do this in my kitchen sink at home, that explained what I had been seeing since I was a kid. They use a yellow root to bathe with. I consider myself an experiencer. And I consider them my neighbors, so to speak, since we share the land. We're neighbors. They live their way, I live my way live and let live, everybody goes their way, sometimes we come together, sometimes we don't. But it's not a case of they're addicted to me or I'm addicted to them. We just simply live in the same place and we share the land. And it's hard to talk about these kind of things with really anybody because they haven't been out here and experienced what I have. They don't live out here, they don't know what goes on. So it's hard to relate these kind of things to people because they look at you with a, you know, excited look they're like oh you're crazy I'm like yes I'm crazy but not because I have seen Sasquatch you know <laughs> I'm crazy because I drove a yellow cab for a living in Houston and I've literally been struck by lightning so that's that's why I'm crazy not anything to do with Sasquatch but uh, yeah um, I'm just an experiencer a lot of us that uh, that I've talked with people who are quote unquote habituators consider themselves experiencers. They don't consider themselves habituators because Sasquatch can be here today and they're gone tomorrow and they may not be back till the next full moon. You know, they come and go whenever they want to and we're not keeping them around. You know, let me let me start this off by saying um, I don't mind speaking about it because I don't need anyone's acceptance or approval on how I live my life but myself. And no one questioned my sanity more than I did when these things started happening. They're, 
in the beginning, you know, in 2008, there were a couple of times I really wish I was ready for a straight jacket. Um, because I'd be in the woods by myself, deep in the woods, uh, walking along, and I'd hear a female voice. And she would say, go down that trail. And I'd stop and I'd look and there would be a trail off to my right and I'd say out loud, I don't want to go down that trail, I'm going down this trail. And the voice came back and said, don't argue, go down that trail, there's a surprise for you. And I said, fine, it's just my imagination that I'm hearing. So I'll humor my imagination and go down that trail. So I started walking down that trail and I could hear what sounded like a human walking in front of me around the corner where the brush was thick like it is here um, and I couldn't see around the corner so I quickened my pace as best I could and the walking course stopped by the time I got onto the main part of that trail and in the middle of the trail was a box turtle about this big around a big one um, and it was just starting to stick its head out like something had scared it so I walked down to the, the box turtle which is about 80 feet away and it was a surprise because there was no water anywhere around and box turtles like water and I'm thinking why is this box turtle in the middle of the trail so I picked up the turtle and he went back in his trail of course closed himself up and I thought well this is really a surprise but what am I supposed to do with a box turtle I don't uh, I don't want a box turtle as a pet and I don't eat turtle what am I going to do with this turtle and the voice came back in my head and said why don't you put it back on the ground? What a novel idea! And that's when I responded with, okay smartass, I'll put the turtle down. So I did, and I walked down the trail another 30 feet or so to the gullies that are there, and looked around for a little bit, and listened. I don't know, I guess I was there for about 30 seconds, and turned around and started back down the trail. Well, when I did, the box turtle was gone. So I started looking around and listening because I know turtles can move fast when they want to, but this one was still closed up in a shell. Um, I looked in the underbrush, listened, I couldn't hear him anywhere, I couldn't see him anywhere. So I stood upright again and I said, what are you going to do with that turtle? And she responded with, well I'm hungry. I said, okay, you enjoy your meal, I'm going back down the trail I started on. That was my first experience with Mindspeak. So right there I had validation for the words I was hearing um, in my head because there was a surprise. I wasn't expecting to see a turtle that far from water and I wasn't expecting to see the turtle disappear either within 30 seconds. So right there was the first experience I had with MindSpeak or telepathy, whichever you'd like to call it. I just call it MindSpeak. Um, from what I've learned from them, what I understand, um, all brains all mammals on this planet are able to have mind speak. Okay, it's a universal thing. That's why we pick it up all the time. We get feelings as to whether someone is aggressive or not, or whether a dog is aggressive towards us or not, because we're feeling what that life form is thinking. We're not able to translate it correctly because we haven't opened that part of our brain. Um, but all of us feel it in some way, shape, or form. I know everybody, just about everybody that watches this uh, has had an experience where they hear the phone ring and they know who's on the phone without looking at caller ID or expecting that person to call. They know who's on the phone and the first thing they always say is, wow, what a coincidence. So immediately they dismiss what just happened. I've learned a lot from them through MindSpeak and I've had most of it validated um, because I've, I've been to locations around here in other places and seeing the physical evidence of what they told me I would see. Children are easier to have experiences because they are not contaminated with what I call adult discontent. In other words there hasn't been an, an adult in their life that has drilled into their head what is real and what's imagination. Everything is real to a seven-year-old and so because our children are so much like the Sasquatch children, um, they interact with them. They, they want to get close to them and see them. They want to try and keep that child from becoming corrupt or tainted with adult discontent. Um, when they're down the hill here in the river bottom, uh, what I've heard before 
is what starts off sounding like a wolf howl and it turns into a cow bellow. A definite giveaway. So it starts off as a howl like you would expect a howl to start and then it turns very guttural. I don't know if people have heard a cow bellow or not but it turns into a cow bellow. What I would say about those people is most of them have a tarnished, tarnished life in some way, shape, or form, like most of us do at some point in our life, and their ego takes over, and they become very egotistical about the, what they're doing. They need something to make them feel better about who they are, so they call themselves an expert. I'll be the first one to tell you I am not an expert on anything but going to sleep and eating really good food. That's the only thing I'm an expert on, okay? Um, and. Uh, you know, I'm just an experiencer, and I'm relating my experiences. I, uh, whether people believe me or not is not important. What I'll say about belief is belief happens, it occurs in the absence of evidence. So don't believe what I'm saying. Go out there and have your own experience. They're not that hard to find or to see if they choose to be around you.